Hi! We have a cat flap in a pantry next to the kitchen. Now the cat can of course open the cat flap by itself, but he can't open the door to the kitchen. So that has to stay open all the time. Wouldn't it be much cooler if the door would open and close for the cat automatically, but all by itself? We can do that. And even without an extra microcontroller. Just a few components. Let me show you. I use a linear actuator to open the door. This one is from AliExpress, like everything else, and it has limit switches. That means when it reaches either end, it just stops. In addition, two infrared motion detectors are used, which do not even cost one euro in China. The links are in the description. We also need a relay with a double changeover switch, an NPN transistor, a diode, and a resistor. Because the output signal of the motion detector is not powerful enough to switch the relay, we use the transistor as an amplifier. The diode is required to protect the rest of the electronics from voltage spikes produced by the relay. On the switching side, the relay is also connected with plus and minus. When it's idle, the voltage is connected to the last two pins. If one of the motion detectors detects a movement and outputs a voltage, the relay switches on and the voltage is applied to the other output pins. If we connect them crossed with the last pins, the polarity is reversed and the linear motor runs in the other direction until it stops at the end stop. If the signal disappears after the time set on the motion detector, the relay switches back the polarity of the motor is reversed again and it returns to its initial position. I decided to assemble the electronics with floating wiring on the relay. The transistor is connected between the plus pin of the coil and the common terminal of the switching part, which later becomes the minus terminal. The two pins of the coil are connected to the diode and one is connected directly to the switching part, where the positive pole of the 12 volt power supply is later connected. With the cut of wire from the diode, I built half of the cross connection. For the other half, I use a cable. This is where the power supply is connected, and the motor is connected to the last pins. I decided to use two resistors, one for each motion detector. The value doesn't really matter, mine are 510 ohms. And now it's starting to get messy. I stripped the cable from the power supply in the middle to branch off the power supply for the motion detectors. If the motion detector now detects a movement, it outputs plus 5 volts at the output. That switches the relay via the transistor and reverses the polarity of the motor. It extends until it just stops at the end. If now, after some time, the motion detector switches off again, the time can be set at one of the two small potentiometers, the relay switches the polarity back again and the linear motor moves again until it stops in the end position. And the electronics are actually finished. At the door I remove the lock, because if that snaps in, all the rest wouldn't work. A replacement is designed in SketchUp and printed with my 3D printer. In the same way I also produced the mountings for the linear motor. I screw the mounting for the motor onto one end of an about 20cm long piece of strip and a hinge to the other end. I add a strong pot magnet to the other side of the strip. The free end of the hinge is screwed to the door, next to it a perforated plate as a counterpart to the magnet. The other end of the motor is mounted with a wooden plate to the door frame. Thanks to the hinge and the magnet, the door can now also be opened manually. Now the electronics have to be installed on site. By the way, under the translucent cap of the motion detector you can read how the pins are connected. This may look like a total mess, 
that's because it is. Maybe I should have built a circuit board after all. In principle it works, <laughs> but the motion detector outside the pantry interprets the closing door as movement and reopens it directly. Uh, so it gets blinkers to limit the angle of vision. And now the cat can leave whenever he likes. That has worked! <laughs> now the design can probably still be improved and uh, it might be a little less noisy, but I think we can fix that. So if you like this, please click the appropriate button with a thumb up and you might consider subscribing to this channel because I'm going to build a lot more stupid nonsense like this. And upon that, see you next week. Bye bye!